Hello everybody, and we are about to continue our Let's Play series of Dark Souls Remastered. In our last video, we started exploring the depths, and now we are about to finish this area and take on the boss. So before we can actually fight the boss, there are some things we're going to have to do. It's been poisoned, that is okay. We do have purple moss. So we just took out the channeler. If you do not take this enemy out, he will be shooting down at you while you were fighting the boss. Definitely something you don't want to deal with. This is where the boss arena is going to be. So he would just sit up here, the channeler, and shoot down those blue spells. And that can be kind of a nuisance when you're trying to fight a boss for sure. should have everything from here. It's definitely a big old labyrinth, that's for sure easy to get turned around. We did pick up some items that, before we go on with the boss, let's just take a look at what we have acquired recently. Okay, Eyes of Death. 
You can we picked these up when we were killing the basilisk. They will drop these, and these are actually a covenant item. The dreadful eyes of death spread disaster across neighboring worlds. Phantoms lured to the host world may end up as victims, allowing the eyes of death to multiply and leading to further proliferation of bane. And we did pick up the spike shield. Shield of the infamous Dark Wraith Kirk, Knight of Thorns, covered with spikes. Can be used as a weapon, and sharp spikes cause heavy bleeding. So, for example, we could actually equip that item. Oh, we also picked up a new ring, the Ring of the Evil Eye. According to legend, this ring contains the spirit of the Evil Eye, a dark beast which assaulted Astora. The strength of the evil eye does not waver, and health is absorbed from all enemies. So when you are attacking and killing an enemy, each time you kill an enemy, you will regain a little bit of health. It's not a lot, but it's always nice to get some health back. And here was the spike shield. As you can see, you can kind of hit enemies with it. And this would actually hurt them. You cannot parry, though. I do not think. Pretty cool looking shield, though. Okay, so this boss, it's not crazy difficult. It can be a little goofy just because it has an attack that can degrade your armor and weapons. Just have to be mindful of that situation. It'll leak out like a... I'm going go with sewer ooze of some kind. It does have a decent amount of health and is a very large enemy. But overall, we should be okay. We can also summon for this fight. There's Solaire. Just be mindful, when you do summon, I believe bosses will have a larger amount of health. So that is always something to consider. Okay, let's get into this fight. Such an intense entrance. Okay, time to fight the gaping dragon. Got us right there. Got us again. Just kind of work your way with the tail. That's not fun.
Okay, and that is the Gaping Dragon. Not too bad of a fight. Kind of fun. Um, we did not get to see the ooze, I don't think. We did pick up some cool items, though. The Blighttown Key. Key to the Blighttown from the depths of the Undead Berg, swallowed by the Gaping Dragon. As its name suggests, Blighttown is a place of great pestilence. Even the polluted inhabitants of the depths are aware of its dangers and built this mighty door in hopes that they could remain safely separated. We have also picked up the hard leather armor set. Armor made of thick leather, very common type of protective gear. It provides a sound level of defense. And just to see how that looks on our character. Not too shabby. Okay, well I think we have about reached the end of this video. We have explored the extents of the depths, and we are going to be tackling on Blighttown in our next episode. I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in, and we will talk again real soon.